Welcome to iLector Online. Now, in part two of the problem, we're also going to vary the density. So notice that the specific heat varies as the radius, and the density varies as the inverse of the radius. So what is the total heat required to take a sphere with radius r and increase it from the initial temperature of zero to the final temperature of t? So we're looking for the total heat required. And again, we're going to take small little spherical shells and we're going to integrate over those shells. We're going to figure out how much heat is required for each little shell, now that we also have a varying density, and integrate, add them all up to find the total heat. So the equation again that we're going to start with is that Q, the amount of heat required, is going to be equal to MC delta T. And of course, delta T is the temperature from zero to T. M is the mass of the sphere, and C is the specific heat. But now we know that the mass is related to the density, which is a variable, and C is also a function of R. So how do we figure that out? Well, first of all, let's now write this in terms of a dQ. We can say that a small amount of heat required for that spherical shell is going to be equal to dM times C times delta T. So now we need to find out what our dM is is equal to the mass of that small little spherical shell. To do that, we find the relationship that the density is equal to the mass divided by the volume, which means that the mass is equal to the density times the volume, and a small amount of mass of that spherical shell is going to be equal to the density times the small amount of volume of that, of that shell. And the volume of a shell can be written as the surface area times the thickness dr, and the density can be written as the density divided by r. So dm is equal to density divided by r. So this here is a constant density divided by the radius. And dv is going to be 4 pi r squared times dr. So now notice that the r squared and the r, we can cancel this with this. And so now we can write that the dm is equal to the density constant times 4 pi r dr. So now we have a new equation for dm, which goes in here, and the specific heat can be defined by that. So dq is going to be equal to dm, which is the constant density, 4 pi r times dr, times c, which is c sub naught times r, times the delta t. And of course, delta t can be defined delta t is equal to t uh, final minus t initial, which is equal to t minus zero, which is equal to t. So we can replace delta t by simply the final temperature. And let's put that over there. Okay, consolidating some things, we can say that dq is equal to density sub naught, c sub naught, four pi, oop, I missed my four. Go. 4 pi times t, and we have an r times r, which is now an r squared dr. And now we're ready to integrate. With other words, what we can say here is that the total q is equal to the sum of all the dqs, which is equal to the integral of the right side of the equation, with r going from 0 to the final r, r. Okay, so now let's integrate and see what we get. So q is equal to Density sub naught, c sub naught, 4 pi t times r cubed over 3. And we're going to evaluate that from 0 to r. And so therefore, when we put in 0, we get nothing. Plug in r, we get the equation. q is equal to 4 thirds times the density times c sub naught times pi times t times r cubed. And so here we get a different equation for the total heat required when both the specific heat and the density vary as indicated. And that is how it's done.